For the generator, I'm going to be using this Furman uh, three fuel option, actually. You can run regular gasoline in it, 90, 91 octane, obviously. Propane, which will give you a surge of 8450 or a running wattage of 6750 or natural gas of 6900 or a running rate of 5500 and this is the option that I'm going to choose is setting it up for this natural gas but having the option to run propane with it and opening it up we've got this set up here where we've got looks like a cover for it in fact I'm 99% sure it's a cover for it not that I'm going to leave it outside with the cover on it could but I'm not going to and then it's got this quick start guide inside of it that you add the wheels and batteries and all that jazz and our accessory kit here had these at Costco for a $200 off for the manufacturer option. There was another generator I was looking at that was a 13,000 running wattage on gas and like 9,500 if you were running it off of propane and then natural gas. And it was over double the price. So I opted to go with this one. And we're going to pull this hose out. It's actually why I opened this up before going into this setup to see what I needed to do for natural gas. So there's our oil. We obviously have to still run oil in it, even though we're running it on natural gas to keep the cylinders lubricated. There's our wheel setup axles and all of our other pieces to hook that up and get it running right for what we need. There's also a battery inside of here we have to connect and some other stuff but I'll get this out of the box and start getting that all wired up. All right unboxing everything for this Furman T07573 generator. You can see it's already got the battery installed on it. The negative cable is not connected. And then we've got the spacer kit. And this is so that when you put the wheels on, it's actually the right height. So it sits level. Funnel, owner's manual, little tool kit. Those two plastic caps go over the wheels when we install them. These are the axles for those wheels. We've got a bracket that holds this twist lock 30 amp cord here that's just a 110 cord. It does have breakers installed on it though, which is super nice. But it's just the twist lock for this L1430R. 30 amp, 120, 240 volt. And then we obviously have our quart of oil and our cover. And I'm gonna talk about two other things in here. This is the propane connection. You can see the quick connection for your propane tank and it goes right on this inlet right here. You just take and thread that on there. Um, you actually don't need Teflon tape because it's a brass fitting and it's a tapered brass fitting. A lot of guys will say, oh, I'm going to put Teflon tape on it anyway. It's actually not required and it can actually mess things up. So because of the tapered style of this fitting, you don't need Teflon tape on there. Probably not going to hurt things, but it's actually not recommended. Um, the other thing is this grounding screw. It's the number one mistake I see people make if they try to run their furnace in the event of an emergency. This grounding screw has to be ran to the 
same ground that your house is to create a bonded circuit. There are a lot of furnaces that will not run if this is not bonded. Now, the way that I am setting up this unit, what I'm gonna show you with our Generlink, is that it will create that circuit for us. But if you don't, and you're not running this the correct way, again, it will not ground and your furnace will in fact not run. So if you're doing this for the event of an emergency, pay attention to this particular bolt right there. So that is your ground. All right, let's go ahead and throw the wheels on and all that stuff and we'll get this set up to run. One other thing to mention, this is a regulator. This is only for propane. I'm going to hook a gas hose on this directly into my natural gas on my house. The natural gas on my house is already regulated. You do not need to run a regulator on the natural gas on your house unless it's not regulated, which I have never ever seen that on any build anywhere. So your house is already set at the right pressure. This is because tanks such as portable propane barbecue tanks are not pressure regulated. This is what regulates that pressure. Your house doesn't need it. Grabbing our first wheel, we're going to put the axle through that, grab one of these washers, put it over that axle, then lift the generator up to where we can slide that through. I'm going to move the camera so you can see it from the inside. That axle is sticking through there. I'm going to push a washer on the inside of that and then push that cotter pin through. And that's it. It's a toolless installation on the axle. I'm going to do the same thing to this side. I'll grab my other wheel. Got our assembly here. Pull that cotter pin out. Push our axle through. Washer. Actually thought it would be worse to do on my own. This one's gonna have that air filter in the way and I'm gonna pull that cover off so you can maybe get a little bit better view of it. And you're not gonna get much of a view of it. We'll push it through there. Try and get you the light when you see that. And you're not going to. I'm gonna have to move the camera out of the way. Drop it twice to make sure you've done it right. There we go. So now we got the other one installed. I'm gonna put that air cover back on. Just so you can see this, it's a oiled air filter. There is pre-oiled. Put this cover back on. choke lever in the way there. That's our choke lever right there. And it's covered back up, so it's good to go. Notice up here, and we'll get there, you've got a selector for natural gas versus LP gas. Eventually we're going to run this on natural gas, but to test it we may run it on some propane, so we'll get to that here in a second. These two plastic caps go over our wheel assembly. So we're going to grab one of them, put that 
in there. And we're pretty much ready to go from that. Now we'll put that spacer on the front. I grabbed a box just to help out with getting up high enough to put this bracket on. And grab the first bolt, push through this guy. There's already holes pre-drilled for it. Grab the other bolt. Nut. Spin that guy on there. It is a 12 millimeter. I grabbed a box wrench and a socket just so we could get in there easier. to that side. An extension would make this a little easier. I'm gonna grab one just to just to make life a little easier. Now we're ready to move on to putting the oil in. For the oil, they give us this Furman oil, and it is a 1030 API SL. So not all 1030s are the same. It's an API SL, which should be pretty standard. You can get that at any auto parts store. Now I will say the service manual for this recommends changing the oil every 25 hours of operation. If I were to take a guess about one of the most common things that people don't do on a generator is they routinely don't change the oil as frequently as they should. Generators, I mean, if you have a power outage, you ran this thing all night long, you're, you should change the oil the next day. So you should change it daily if you're running it nonstop. And the idea behind this generator is that I can run it on natural gas and I can run it nonstop. Now, do I think daily is a little bit excessive? Well, depends how much load you've got going on there and all the other factors that go into it. So they give us this little funnel here. I'll pour this guy in there. And it's got check marks on the funnel as well. I'm gonna pour this all in. Going off of memory here, but it takes the entire quart of oil to fill this up how it should be. going to. So it'll take the whole quart of oil. Air filter should be serviced every 50 hours. Yep, that looks good. We can put our dipstick back in there which has its hash marks on there. You can see there's a low and a high on there. Put it in there. Spin that out. 
it's hard to see because it's new oil, but it's right, right above the L, right in, right in the middle. So we're good to go there. I'm gonna grab some wire snips to get rid of that wire zip tie they've got there and clip that together and the battery will be hooked up and we're almost ready to start it up. Before we fire this up, I'm going to put our cord holder on here. To do that, you simply place it over that, flip it over and peel off these double stick adhesive 3M tape. And this just holds that 30 amp plug in place, keeping everything nice and contained. I'm going to put it down and I want to put it in front of the stickers kind of centered. Push down on it. Honestly, the weight of it should hold in place anyway, but that's going to keep it from vibrating. And our extension cord here now has a home. So we can set that guy in there just like that. All right. Last but not least, to test it out, I'm not going to put gas in there because the whole reason I bought this generator is I don't want to be having to run fuel stabilizer and all that garbage in an emergency can obviously do that, but I'm gonna test it with propane first, and then we're gonna hook it up to the natural gas of my house a little later and get that all set up and running. So there's that guy there. I'm gonna grab a wrench and tighten it. And we're almost there. We got our oil in. You got our battery connected, cord attached, wheels on, bracket on. We're just about ready to go. Okay, they give you this placard here that's really handy for the starting instructions. And it gives you recoil start instructions as well and electric start instructions. Since we're going to try natural gas, or propane rather than natural gas, just to test it out, I've opened the tank all the way. Yes, I have my garage doors open, so we're good to go there. I'm going to set the main fuel selector to LPG, NG, turn the selector switch to the LPG position, move the choke lever to the start position, which is to the left, and then crank it for three seconds or until it fires up. So, tank all the way open. Fuel selector, you'll see that we have gas and LPG. So we're gonna switch over to LPG. You'll notice our light comes on because we have our battery connected down here. We're gonna come over to this side. It is currently set for natural gas. We're gonna change it to LP. We've got the choke in the start position. So now we're gonna go ahead and crank it for three seconds. A second, we'll do it again. Move this choke back. Choked it until it fired over and then put it back in the run position and hit the start button again for three seconds. Fired right up. That was the first try. I honestly hadn't tried this off video before pulling out of the box. Super simple. So far, I am really impressed with this setup. I like that it's got these quick guides on here for telling you how to start it and everything else. Just for fun, 
Let's try a recoil start instead of the electric start, because that is a different configuration. Okay, almost the same setup. We want to change this over to LPG. We want to have our fuel selector over here to LPG, which it's set there from last time. It says to put it in the start position. I'm going to because I didn't run it very long last time, but we'll come over here and you want to pull it to get the ratchet in position until you feel pressure and then it'll kick over like it did before. We'll do the same thing again. That was easy. Uh, two mistakes I see people make on these types of motors all the time is that they don't do that indexing on the ratchet pole to where you get it to where you get a full lope or a full turnover of that engine. They just grab the rip cord and start giving her hell, let it, you know, cranking on it. Get in the fuel position, make sure you got the right fuel type selected. Then from there, index it once. The second time it should catch when you feel that it's ready to go give it a yank there. Don't start from the bottom of the pull because that's how people often break their pull rope assembly is they start cranking from the very bottom. Even though I've got my garage doors open, I'm not going to run this anymore inside here just for risk of carbon monoxide poisoning. I do like that this actually has the CO alert on there and you'll notice it registers when we first start it that it's sensing CO and it kind of tells you that it's working. It cleared out because I'm in a big garage, doors open, that type of stuff. CO is heavier than air, so it should be going out the door anyway, but just to be safe, I'm not gonna do that anymore. From here, I'm going to disconnect this propane hose and get the natural gas hose and all those fittings to connect it up to the natural gas on the outside of my house. But I'm gonna stop this video here and I will continue on another series where I connect that to the natural gas as well as setting up my Jenner link.